Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. We're here with Tony from Survivor Game Changers and the winner of Survivor Kagiyan. Hey, what's up, Joanne and Stacy? Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Thanks for speaking with us today. No problem. Sorry it's under these circumstances, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah, so are we. How did your family react to you playing again? Uh, you know, it was it was more like, hey, Tony, why? Why go back out there again? You're, you're going to be a big target. Everybody's going to be gunning for you. Just leave it alone. You, you, you know, you did it. You did it. Once you did it right, you won, leave it alone. I'm like, nah, I can't leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you have to prepare once you knew you were going to play again, and what did you do this time different? Uh, same, same thing that I, that I did the first time. I just, just trying to pack on the weight. Uh, I went on a 5,000 calorie a day diet, and I was just eating everything I could, you know, going to the gym, but eating a lot, uh, just trying to gain some muscle, trying to gain some fat. You know, I was ready for the long haul, but unfortunately... <laughs> That was long haul with six days for me. Yeah, how much did you put on? Uh, I put on about 20 pounds, 20 pounds of, you know, of good fat, I guess. What other plans for the season did you have that we didn't get to see? Um, well, I, w- I wanted to put the spy bunker in effect. We didn't get a chance to really utilize that. I, I wanted to do some clones where, you know, like I, what I do is I, I find rocks on the beach and I, you know, I use them to, uh, as an indicator of my wife my, and my two kids. And I did that in Kage and, you know, I would kiss mm-hmm. the rocks and put them in my pocket. So, I, you know, and I was going to use that to my advantage by letting people see that I have the rocks that me, that are sacred to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, Caleb grabbed some rocks also, and he had those rocks too. So I was like, all right, this is perfect. So later on in the game, you know, if, if we made it far and I wanted to blindside somebody, I would be like, okay, this, this, here's my family. You can hold on to my family. These are my rocks. You know how sacred they are to me. You know how sentimental I am with them. I'm telling you, I'm not going to blindside you. You're not going home tom- tonight. You'll be here tomorrow to give me back the rock. And those will really be clones, so I wouldn't care to blindside the person and let them go home with the rocks in their pocket, you know? Oh, you were going to take being a villain to a new level, huh? Yeah, yeah, I guess. If it worked out, it would have been brilliant, but if it didn't work out, yeah. it was, they would have stoned me with them. Yeah. How exactly was that underground bunker going to work, and how far down were you planning to dig? Uh, I, I think I was good. I think I was really good. Um, what happened was I, I, I scouted the area, and when I found where the water well was, and I know that's where everybody congregates. I, I found an area that, that was kind of soft. that had some sand mixed with dirt. And I was like, all right, that's perfect for me to start digging there. But first, what I had to do was I had to throw a bunch of debris on top of it. Um, I grabbed some broken tree branches, I, some palm fronds, some tree bark. So I threw a bunch of debris there to let them get used to seeing a big mess over there. So when later on in the game, they won't say, oh, that's out of place. Let's go investigate what the hell that is. So I try to get their eyes accustomed to seeing a bunch of debris there for the first few days. And then I started digging my hole in that spot. Um, so I would dig it little by little by little to the point where I, I could put my body in it and I could cover myself with the debris. So basically, uh, three quarters of my body from the bottom up would be covered and then the debris would cover the other quarter of my body. So I would have been co- completely concealed under the debris and it would have worked out perfectly. So what was your reaction when you first saw the other returning players and was there anyone you did or didn't want to play with? Uh, you know, it, it didn't make a difference to me. It didn't matter. Uh, my only concern was that they seen how I played the game in Cagayan, and my only concern was, are they going to trust me enough to keep me around? Are they going to trust me enough to, to make an alliance with me? Are they going to be willing to do that? That was my only concern, so it didn't matter who was playing out there. Uh, my concern was that they know they know my game, they know my antics, they know my shenanigans. Are they going to put up with that? Are they going to accept me into the loop? And that was my only concern, and when, you know, when I got into the beach... It was it was clear that they were you know they were receptive of me. They were like, okay, Tony's just being the clown that he is. And you see, when I started running around looking for the idol, you know, I I didn't want to do it sneaky, you know, because they they were expecting me to do stuff sneakily, sneakily. So I did. I said, you know what, guys, I'm gonna do it in your face. I'm just playing around. I'm just a big clown. I'm just goofing off. I'm just gonna run in the jungle look for an idol. Just and you know, and it worked because they were like, all right, so that's just Tony being Tony. He's a big goofball, and it worked because they didn't want to vote me out the first one. So obviously, you know, obviously. I, I got in good graces by just being a jokester, you know? Mm-hmm. So on day five, Haley told Sandra that you had not talked to her. Is there a reason why? I did. I actually did talk to her. I went up there and I said, Haley, uh, it was by the water well, and I said, listen, Haley, you know, I, I don't know you much, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm willing to work with you if you want to make any moves. And she just straight up tells me, listen, you know, I've seen your game of Kage yet, and, you know, and you're a cop, and I, I, I personally don't, don't believe much what cops have to say. You know, she, she was trying to make a statement. I think she's a public defender, what she is. And she was just trying to give me a cheap shot, you know. And at that mm-hmm. point, I was like, wow, you, you really don't know how to play this game, huh? Because if that's how you really felt about it, you should have just kept it to yourself. 
and used me for information because I told you I was willing to work with you. Yeah. But she just told me that straight up. And again, being the player that I am, I didn't take it personal. So I'm not going to go gun for her just because I personally didn't like her, you know? Mm-hmm. So I what, just let it be. I just ignored her and she ignored me. Yeah. What was your reaction to Zeke and Michaela being in the season? Um, You know, again, it was to me, I was kind of... I was kind of happy because I was like, all right, this is perfect. I shouldn't be the first one going home if either one, either one of them is on my tribe because nobody knows nothing about them. That's a great pitch to sell. Listen, guys, you can get rid of these pers- people now because you don't know nothing about them. Get rid of them now, and the next one you could get rid of me, you know? But let's get rid of these people first that we don't know nothing about. How did the? How do you think the Game Changers title affected the gameplay of everyone? Uh, you know, to, to me, it didn't affect me in any way. I was just out there. I was just doing what, what I do best, and I just... Played the, as hard as I can play. Others, others that didn't really think. Uh, others that got happy that they were called. You know, there's a few people that were like, "Oh, I was surprised I got called for a game changers kind of season." I'm sure that they they had to step up to the plate and and try to you know and try to do something crazy or try to make a massive move to make an impression. You know, but yeah. as far as I was concerned, I think I didn't have to. I didn't have to live up to anything. I just played my game like I do, you know? If you had to grade your tribe mates as either successful or improvement required, how did they fare? My tribe mates? Yeah. The ones that voted me out? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I would say improvement necessary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, do you have any sense of how far apart the tribes were? No idea. We have no clue with that. What was your shelter like, Tony? The shelter? Uh, we, you know what? The first few days, we didn't even care about shelter, to be honest with you. I mean, it was gorgeous out there. There was no humidity. There was no rain. There was no wind. It wasn't hot. It wasn't cold. It was. It was just. It was beautiful, actually. You know, and and I was so happy. I was like, well, wow, this is great compared to where I went through in Cagayan. I, and you know what? I, maybe it was because my time was short lived. But I didn't even get bit by one mosquito. So wow. I don't know if it was because I was there that quick. That I was gone that quick. That I didn't get bit, or it was just no. No mosquitoes out there. It was so nice. How far did you guys have to go for your water? And did, did you have to boil it? So, so he, he, this is he, another another bad luck stroke for me. When we got into the beach, we had a, a designated area where a tribe flag is, and that was our designated area to set up camp. Whatever reason that these people on the, they they thought they were at a resort and they wanted to have oceanfront view, so they went looking for a better spot to relocate our campsite, and it just happened to be it was like fifty feet away from the water well. And that's what made it very difficult for me to, to build my spy sh- my spy bunker over there because mm-hmm. they could just peek up and see me digging over there. So it was very challenging for me to do that. I was so upset that they moved the camp that close to the water well. But as far as the water, being that I was only there five days and the, and the water was pretty much fresh in the water well, we were just drinking it right out of the water well. Okay. Who on your tribe surprised you by playing a different game than you expected? I, you know, I, I didn't. I, I really didn't have any expectations of any any of them. Um, I tried to go in there with a clean canvas. I didn't want to. I didn't want to just. I didn't want to go based on their past performances because you know that that can tarnish your your game while you're playing right there and then. So I wanted everything to be situational. But obviously, the the most impressive one for me was Sa- Sandra. Uh, she was able to. Uh, to get a, a, a strong hold on all these guys and say, guys, you know, let's vote for Tony against their own will because I know Caleb, I know Malcolm, I know Aubrey did not want to vote for me. And you can see in confessionals, even Caleb was saying, you know, I don't want to vote for Tony. We shouldn't vote for Tony. Mm-hmm. But in the end, they voted for me. So that, that was very impressive how she made people vote vote against their own will. She made them vote against me and they didn't want to. That's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and when we collided, when we clashed heads, my mission was to get everybody against her. Our mission was to get everybody against me. Our mission was accomplished. Mine wasn't. It was as simple as that. She she played a better game than I did. So did you see anyone else looking for the hidden immunity idol? And were you surprised you didn't find one? Oh, I, I, I did see everybody here and there looking. But I was definitely surprised I didn't find one. The amount of time I put into looking for one, it was, liter- it was non-stop. The problem was Fiji got hit with a typhoon or some kind of major storm right before we went to filming. Most of the palm trees were knocked down. Most of the palm fronds were down. The whole the whole jungle was in disarray. Mm-hmm. So there was nothing iconic. There was nothing that popped out, nothing that stood out that I that I was used to. I was like, wow, there was a big tree. Look how grand that tree looks. I got to dig around the roots. I got to look at every hole. I got to look through anything I can find, you know? And it worked for me in Kagayan. But this time, there was nothing. There was nothing that popped out except for tree now. And in the beginning of the, of the, of the episode... That's when I started, you know, behind every joke lies the truth. So I was joking around saying, hey, guys, I'm going to run out, look for the idol. But I really meant it. And when I didn't see nobody following me, I was like, okay, great. I have a few minutes here. Let me go look through that tree now because that's the only place that I see 
that possibly a hidden clue could be there or an idol could be there. And to, to, to my surprise, there was nothing there. Nothing. I couldn't find anything. I looked all over the place. What did you think about the new twists on the tied votes? Um, I, I really didn't think, I didn't put too much thought into it. Uh, I didn't think it made a difference, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, they, they tied the vote. I mean, obviously, when you go to revote, you know who you're going to want out. So it, this, it just forces you to just make the decision without going back up for a revote. Just, listen, guys, this is what we're going to do. Let's just vote one of these people out. That's it. It's a done deal. So, I, I mean... It puts a little bit more pressure on you, I guess, but the result's the same, I guess. You know, if you can't make a decision whether you revote or not, still you're going to rocks. Right. So, so to me, it's the same thing. It just eliminated the middle step. Gotcha. Going back up to revote. Those are two great challenges. Was there anything that we didn't get to see that went down during those? No, I, I mean you 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 seen you seen exactly how it played out. I mean that that make I mean oh my goodness it was so 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 heavy. I don't know how the other team managed to like move, maneuver it as fast as they did. Um, a lot of props to Ozzy. You know he's the he's the fish. He's the fish of the tribe that went underneath the water and tied all the knots for the snake. He got the snake up way faster than we did and. Uh, and that right there, you know, that, that did us in. They, they had a big head start. We feel we missed a lot of the discussions before the second tribal council. Tell us what happened and how you ended up voting for Aubrey. Okay, so when when, uh, when my when I clashed heads with Sandra, that moment when I heard them talk about Tony, and I went up to them and said, what are you guys talking about? From that moment on, we know it was it was on. It was me against her, and she knew she had to get me out. I knew I had to get her out at that moment. So the scrambling around camp was, let's just throw, or- when I was there, it was, let, let's get rid of Aubrey, because Aubrey was not there, obviously. So they were telling me, let's get rid of Aubrey. So now I see Aubrey sitting on the tree by herself, and I said, you know what, let me go talk to Aubrey. I go, I say, hey, Aubrey, what's going on here? Uh, and she's like, oh, nothing. I said, what are they telling you? Who are they telling you to vote for? And she's like, no, they're not saying anything to me. I said, all right, Aubrey, I'm pretty sure they're telling you me. I'm pretty sure they're telling you to vote for me. And guess what? They're telling me vote for you. So if I have an idol and I play the idol, you're probably going to wind up going home. I said, do you want to make a move here? Do you want to do something big? And she was telling me, Tony, I'm just going to let fate take its course. If I'm meant to go home, I go home. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, man. So then the next person I see was Troy Zan sitting on the beach on a rock. I go up to him and I say, Troy Zan, can I talk to you, man? This was a couple of hours before tribal, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when all the scrambling goes on. Hey, Troy Zan, can I talk to you for a minute? He's like, oh, Tony, not right now. I'm having a Zen moment. You know, I'm at peace right now. I'm just relaxed. I said, Troy Zan, we're going to tribal council in an hour or two. You know, and he was like, Tony, I just want to, you know, I just want to have a nice end moment right now. I don't want to scramble right now. So, you know, obviously the writing, the writing is becoming clearer and clearer on the wall. Then I go to Jeff, Jeff Barnum. He gives me a thumbs up, winks his eye at me and walks away. And he says, we're good, Tony, we're good. Just keep the vote the way we're going. And I said, okay, give me a second. Let me just talk to you. He didn't want to make any eye contact with me. He didn't want to talk to me. He just walked away. He just gave me a thumbs up and walked away. Right then and then, that's it. I know for a fact, Sandra turned all these people against me. Yeah. My only two my only two hope to try to get on my side besides Michaela, because Michaela was still I knew Michaela would have definitely jumped on my side to keep the team strong. So I knew Michaela would have been my last my last resort to go talk to her after I got some numbers together. So I was trying to get numbers together and I couldn't. So I went to Caleb, I went to Malcolm and they both told me the same thing. They were told just leave it alone. Let's not let's not stir anything up right now. Let's not make anybody go into panic. We're good. Let's just go with Aubrey. And I seen right through them. I, I, I knew they were lying. I knew that they, they didn't really want to go with the Aubrey vote. You know, you could tell that they didn't. And mm-hmm. I knew they didn't want to go with my with getting rid of me. You could just see it in their face. And there was nothing I could do. They just wouldn't budge. Sandra, Sandra masterfully convinced them that I need to go. And they, they were sticking by their guns that I needed to go. Wow. And I knew that going into travel, you know. Did you have any trouble sleeping out there this time like you did last time? Oh, yeah, it was in trouble. It's not trouble not sleeping. It's just, you know, I chose not to sleep. Just I just wanted to think and strategize about things, you know. And and, and and they actually saw me. That's what I would do. I would just stand up right above everybody, just looking at everybody and just running through scenarios in my head. You know, it's a lot easier when you're looking at them to run a scenario through your head, you know. So I would just sit there and I would just watch them and I would just like, all right, if, if I can get Malcolm on my side, if I could get Caleb on my side and we hit the merge, you know, it'll be good for my game because I could throw Malcolm under the bus and say, listen, he's good at challenges. I could throw Caleb under the bus. I say, listen, he's good at challenges. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to win an individual mini community challenge. So let's just get rid of these guys first before me. And, you know, that, and, and, and that's, and that's what we were supposed to, we were supposed to use each other as, as shields, you know, right. All of us were threats. My, you know, when we formed that alliance, me, Aubrey, Caleb, Malcolm, um, and Sandra, we were all threats and we could help each other. And we knew that we knew we were going to use each other. Later on in the game, as a shield, like okay, listen, 
You guys want to get rid of me? I'll offer you Sandra. I'll give you my vote. Let's get rid of Sandra. She's a two-time winner. She's a bigger threat than I am. You could get rid of me later. And that would have been all of our pitch later on in the game. You know? Yeah. That was just way too soon to get rid of You know, it was way too soon to do what we did, you know, to get rid of me at that point. It was way too soon. So big question, Tony. Would you play again? If you ask me now, I would say no. I would, you know... It, you know, again, after Kagayan, when I finished Kagayan and I had a great season, I told Jeff, I said, Jeff, please lose my number and never call me. I will never play this game again. Because it's, it's, a, it's a brutal game. I mean, it's, it's vicious, you know. It's very bad and from, from all, all aspects of it, you know, from emotional, from, from just, just everything, physically, mentally. It just, it's so draining. And to backstab people that you, you know, you form bonds with, that you know you have to do, but it still hurts, you know, as a, as a human being, you know, it's just not nice. And I felt what these people in Kayayan felt when I got my torch snuff last night. And that was, that's, it's pretty brutal, you know. Yeah. And I feel bad for everybody I blindsided on Kayayan. What's next for you? Next for me is the, the family man that I am, you know. I got my two little ones, I'm just raising them, and I'm happy, you know. It's just great, it's a pleasure. Well, Tony, thank you for sharing with us today, and good luck to you and your family. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having me. Okay, yeah, thank bye-bye. You. Bye-bye.